it does show that Garvey does have some answers to the meta going on. And another global chucked in for the sake of globals. You have got the Shen <laughs> almost certainly going up into the top side. Of course, River Shen was gaining some popularity just before Worlds came in. Uh, you know, speak of free Drake at the start going over to Team WE. And they still haven't really made anything happen here on the top side on LGD. Oh, what a beautiful trade by Breed. Breed is basically winning every single trade against this Renekton. Engaging. They're very, very nicely set up. Very... Very highly mechanical, as we can see the Leona jumping straight now on top of Peace. They will knock him back, but the Shen is there. They're going to try and just use him as a Shen delivery system. The cleanse has been used. Peace, though, will fall down at his first blood. The feathers fly. They're tanking up the turret. Garvey, though, flashing underneath his own turret. Ooh. Nicely done, though, from Garvey. He will end up going down, but very well played there from the stand-in AD carry. Great fall. Uh, fall down there. Yeah, now looks like Team WE, they've had enough of Garby playing AD carry with no summoners available, no ult either. The solar flare goes down, Bajan picks himself up that kill. Missing is tanking up as much as possible. Joman picks up the second. Team WE return to the scene of the crime to pick up some more spoils. He's going to pick up these minion waves. He's going to be much further ahead on this, uh, on this patch. And it looks like LGD is looking to try and trade back onto the top side. Maybe get cult fed enough where he can become a split pusher. A lot of pings coming out um, onto the bottom side, so they definitely know where Beishang is, and uh, I am not hearing my co-caster at the moment, so I'm just going to continue with the cast. Limpid does fall down as Beishang comes in, swoops in for another kill. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, we do have some uh, technical difficulty, so it's going to be me solo cast for a while right here. We're seeing Garvey able to get the Blade Storm off, but is he able to survive? Wow, the shield comes in, but unfortunately... The Leona still falls down. It's a one-for-one one trade and very well played by Garvey in that instance. Again, we also saw the ultimate burn by the Shen. Stand United not able to teleport down here. And Shanks trying to come in but gets picked off by the incoming members of LGD. So I feel like at some point they do have to look for those advantages with this composition. Try to press the early game advantages a little bit harder. But they do decide to just teleport top lane. Take down the tower. However, the tower was already pretty low. This is sitting on like 300. And we're just going to see Cult maybe get caught out right here. Missing has been on point with these roams. He's here first. Great burst combo incoming from Jomong. And unfortunately for LGD, got they themselves get the two dragons stacking, and looks like they're gonna try and catch out this top lane now. There is a flash available, nicely done here by the side of Team WE to get themselves a nice, easy, and quick kill. And overall, it feels like as soon as I come back, LGD just have to hit the go button straight away. Garvey dies Ooh. in the air, doesn't even get to let the feathers fly. Flora is here, a cult though, 3v2, 3v3. As P still available with that flash. Walk in and kill him underneath the tower. Breathe has a perfect angle right here. And how is LGD going to get away with this? Ooh, they get the kill onto the Rift Herald, but I don't... I just want to say one of the greatest changes come into them. Yep, you're now putting on a five-minute timer. So again, similar to game one, it is at 23 minutes roughly that you'll see Team WE and LGD really go a clash of heads. It is an Aatrox taking that dragon, so it is a very, very slow run. Galio. That was pretty much what they were banking on to have some shutdowns and to influence some lanes. Didn't happen. Jeez. W are sitting very pretty. Oh. Couple pieces incoming. Jomong does just jump straight in on top of that with the Shen in tow. Means that he knows. Vision area. So I like what W are doing here. They're basically starting Baron before the Drake timer comes up, and they're taking away oh. that comeback potential. And LGD might not even be aware of it. They were. There was a lot of pings going down. They're aware, but they are far, far too late to do anything about it. And that is a Baron going over before the Drake has spawned. Flash in from missing. Forces the insta-cleanse from Garvey as the fight is now kicked off. The flash in from the Alistair means that the Kaiser is dead. Jomong has gone down. They do trade it, though, for the Syndra. Flora trying to take down the Leona. It's a two-for-one, two-for-two trade. It's actually a three-for-two or three-for-one trade in favor of LGD. And yes, Team WE were in the advantage, but they overforced this fight so damn hard as Breathe. It's going to be a very slow burn to take his HP down, but he will eventually 
potentially fall. Will he be able to take down Flora though? Yes, he will. <laughs> we'll take a kill off just no. before he dies. They will take the turret, but LGD finding a little bit of life booster for LGD. They know that they can win these fights even under massive deficits. Not even just a, you know, kind of a morale booster. There's a lot of gold, just in general. The resources are back in their favor, but the dragon has been started up. It's ended by 2,000 HP. Will it go down? It will in favor of Team WE. They get themselves an Infernal Soul, and there's the shotgun straight into the back of the Syndra, as now LGD run for their lives. They're just a little too late on the play. Flora will fall to missing, and Team WE said, all right, you had your moment in the sun. It's now time for us to go back to winning this game. They've got themselves still one Baron Bull, and still plenty of people available with help bars and they're gonna barrel into this mid lane tier two we've heard coaches talk about this but the funny thing in league of legends is a lot of times you can lose team fights and win tempo yeah because you reset first you know death is a reset so the quickest w reset. capitalizing on that one <laughs> we capitalizing get themselves the infernal soul they also they uh push towards that top side Missing, just hovering between the mid and top side, making sure that there's no shenanigans being put on toward. No. Just stripping all the outer towers. Uh, they're not really uh, putting too much weight on the stand United at this point. They just have to make it happen, Ooh. and this is exactly how you make it happen. But it doesn't matter if you're all the way in the enemy base near the Baron. If you get caught out in the mid lane now, it's a 4v5, and they just jump in with Jomong, who has to go into Golden Stasis. I don't even think it matters if he dies, because it does so much damage from the Aatrox, too much healing as well. And peace not being there means they get completely caught out. Does not back breed though, and he actually might fall just because of the turret aggro. So overall, it ends up being a two for two trade. But Team WE, they've got the pressure in the mid lane. They can turn straight to the I feel like you just gonna have to give this one up, LGD. You have not in position. You decided to try and go for the Baron. That was the incorrect choice. And now that the Elder Drake is down. That's about it. I I'm not walking anywhere near. And you can see already missing just straight up wise to that as well as Shanks. And they're just saying, right. We know he, the way he's playing, I think it actually it actually suits his style. It suits his team, where you're looking at a team that's not the W of 2020. They actually have multiple carries right now, and they can afford to play this way. Yep. He is around here, trying to see if he can just maybe get some clip, clip feathers onto some of those minions, but... The fight will go in, the flash in, the knock up. They are going to use Joe Monk to get himself backed away completely. There is going to be Beishong jumping straight on top of the Syndra. Garvey gets some nice feathers pulled, but everybody will be falling down. There's only so much that Colt can do, and that is going to be game two and match point to the side of Team WE. Awesome, clean finish coming in from WE. I love the way they played the final team fight. Joe Monk uses the Killer Instinct backward. And the Stand United is on point to cancel all of the, all of the damage. It was kind of just a slow burner. There was a couple of small little hiccups, as you can see there, and the little bumps on the road. It didn't matter at the end of the day because Team WE, they they just have a, honestly as much more kind of better grasp of what their team. Are.